Thank you very much for being here. Thank you. Um, well, I just want to say this is really awesome. It's really awesome to see all of you ladies. I want to know all about what you do. Um, and it's awesome to see some gentlemen in the audience. That's really exciting, too. So thank you guys for, for coming today. So we are here about the word sorry. So you are attending a course called Sorry I'm Not Sorry, So Why Am I Still Sorry for Not Being Sorry, AKA Be an Email Feminist. So this lovely woman is my friend Linda. And she is a pretty badass lady. Um, you've probably, if you don't know her, you've probably heard of one of her establishments. If you've lived in Seattle, you've probably been to one of her um, super cool hip places. And she's been doing that for 20 years and she's really one of the coolest, um, most driven women I know. Um, so in the early days of me trying to figure out my life, which as Larry has witnessed, is been successful, I guess, maybe, yep. so far. Um, I asked her a lot of questions about, you know, how she pursued her passions and, um, you know, how she became the successful woman that, that she is. So one day, uh, over tacos at one of her restaurants, their delicious bait shop, I would really recommend them, uh, she looked at me and she said, are you feminist? And I was not expecting that question. And it startled me. That was my first just visceral reaction to that question. And it made me uncomfortable. Um, so I said what I think, you know, many women say when asked this question, no. But more, I mean, you know, I, I like totally believe in equality for everyone. Women are awesome. I'm awesome. But I just, I just wouldn't say I'm a, a feminist. Um, so here's what the dictionary has to say about feminism. Feminism is the belief that men and women should have equal rights and opportunities. So as long as you're not an asshole, that's a pretty reasonable, acceptable concept. <laughs> and more and more so now, thankfully. It's getting better. So for me, why in that moment, why was the word feminism weird for me? What, what about the idea of equality felt almost embarrassing? Um, and I realized the label feminism was uncomfortable for me because I thought it had these connotations. Bitchy, demanding, bossy, loud, rude, harsh, unfriendly, aggressive, cold. All of these just stereotypes of, of what a feminist is. And I, I was buying into that. I was basically buying into the, what the world had been selling me. And I didn't really know it at the time that idea that owning up to my strength and worth as a woman is for some reason something to be scared of, uh, both for other people and myself. Because in our world, strong man equals good man, but strong woman equals scary woman. So back to tacos. Um, so Linda asked me this question, are you feminist? And I didn't, ha I didn't have a good answer then. I was, I was surprised. Um, but that question implied in there, why do you feel strange in calling yourself a feminist or, or identifying yourself with feminism really stuck itself in my mind. Um, there's the seed planted, the spark of awareness uh, to question that narrative, the stories that we were being told and to, and to be more conscious um, of who I was really as a person and instead of who people wanted me to be. So, so it started something, um, and I really consider that question a gift, um, and it was really life-changing and profound for me. Um, so my awareness started to grow even more when I kept seeing this certain topic pop up, you know, in social media, on the internet. Uh, people were forwarding me articles at work, um, and it was about how women and how they communicate, and more specifically, um, that we're constantly apologizing, how that's a bad thing. So here's just a few of them. Three things women should stop apologizing for. 23 things. This is from the same website, by the way. So I uh, guess there were more things uh, to apologize for all the time and don't need to. Why women apologize and should stop. A study that reveals why women apologize so much. And I'm sorry, but women really need to stop apologizing. And this is like a snapshot of, of what's out there. Just Google it and you will find a mountain of them. As I was 
seeing these videos and reading these articles um, as a writer, the, that, the attention to that topic was really something that struck me in a fundamental way. Um, because in my job, I, I think about words and I think about how people use words to say the stuff that they want to say. Um, so this topic of women and how they communicate interested me, I'm a writer, I'm a woman. Um, but like in the video, I saw powerful, intelligent women all around me use this type of language all the time. And they weren't really aware that they were doing it. But I, I didn't participate in these habits. No, no ma'am. I am an independent woman who says what she thinks and I don't apologize. I don't say sorry all the time. I don't apologize for things that aren't my fault. Well, I was, I was wrong. I was really wrong. I went back through some emails, and uh, so this is an email where I'm apologizing for the broken toilet that basically almost caused my shower to give me third degree burns, um, and uh, she wasn't really answering my emails, and it was, it was made showering kind of dangerous, but I, I was very sorry about that. <laughs> this one, this one is me apologizing for trying to come up with ideas for an even more expensive and thoughtful gift for my sister. Sorry to keep pestering you for ideas. Has she had anything, you know, had her eye on anything that might be a little pricier? This one is me apologizing to a recruiter who canceled on me three times. Sorry about the scheduling difficulties this week. Let me know if, when you'd like to chat. My schedule is more flexible this week. Sorry. This, is, this one is me actually apologizing for something that I genuinely fucked up on. I was supposed to unlock my gym in the morning. The, the trainer wasn't there, and so I was supposed to do this. Slept in. Legitimately, that was something I should apologize for. But I kind of go overboard. I'm so, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I, I uh, can't believe I did that. Will you please send my apologies to everyone? I wish there was a better way to make it up to everyone. I feel like such a jerk. In the future, don't hesitate to call my ass at 6.30 a.m. It won't happen again, though, I promise. Yay for Monday and unsmiley face. Just cap it all off. <laughs> uh, so it was pretty stunning, to be honest. It really, it really woke me up um, because I just I really didn't think I was doing this stuff. So I undertook just a personal experiment on my own. And um, it was really simple. I, I read everything that I wrote in emails, and I reread it. And that, that was it. Um, and I started paying attention to my emails because that's kind of the easiest place to start. It's just something that we're constantly doing all the time. Um, but I started paying attention to, to every single email that I wrote and being really conscious about every word um, that I was typing, literally every word and why it was there and questioning the meaning of it. Um, and I, I was blown away by, by that, my instinct to just go for the apology when I felt you know, awkward about a situation, or to soften requests when I thought I might be asking too much, uh, to end things with that emoticon or exclamation point, just a reminder to everyone like, hey, I'm, I'm nice and I'm fun, really, you guys. Um, so then the second stage after kind of sitting and, and reading and really noticing this stuff was to, to start changing, to start changing these behaviors. Um, and the good news was that it's, it's a pretty simple process. You just cut that shit out, you stop. <laughs> uh, so I just simply started taking that out. I would go back and reread something and any time I saw an I'm sorry, I said, how do I, how do I say this without saying that? And a lot of times it was just as simple as removing that and leaving what was left there and just saying what I had to say without really apologizing for it. And I noticed an effect immediately, like, like the same day that I started doing this. Um, and it made me feel Amazing. <laughs> like Beyonce, who is the best thing ever. Um, almost, almost instantly, there were some, some external tangible uh, results. I, I felt like I was getting replies more quickly to my emails or things that I was asking for. Um, things that I wanted to happen seemed to happen faster or more accurately. There were less mistakes. Um, and overall, I just felt like I was doing my job better. I was just kicking more ass than usual. Um, but more importantly than that, I felt an internal change. I felt this just general feeling of confidence. I felt this internal strength um, and assurance and not this persistent questioning of myself all the time. Uh, I felt pride in my hard-earned expertise. I've worked really hard to get to where I am. Um, and I 
stopped feeling shame for my accomplishments and just really owning them. Uh, I felt more respected and listened to, uh, not judged or ignored, and I felt assertive, but, but purposeful, not demanding or unreasonable. Like, I'm not an unreasonable person. Um, so it felt like I had really stumbled onto this secret, like, like the secret. Uh, <laughs> like, it was this magical superpower that I feel like I had uncovered. Um, and it was just as simple as removing some, some of these automatic, unconscious words that we've been conditioned to use as women. Um, I didn't find it easy. It was so embedded, and it really took being so hyper-conscious and really making that effort to really understand the extent of, of what it was like for me. Um, so some people might say, and I hear this kind of rebuttal a lot is, oh yeah, well, isn't it sexist to criticize how a woman speaks? Isn't it anti-feminist to insinuate that women should change the way they communicate? And you know, what's, what's so wrong with being nice anyway? I'm a nice person. Uh, that's a fair question. Um, and so there's this, this idea, this school of thought that kind of rails against the idea that women need to change how they communicate at all. So what if, so what if I, you know, I apologize and use softer language? That's my nature. I'm, I'm a kind, understanding person. Some women are more direct and aggressive, but that's just not me. And that should be okay. So my question to you is, is being overly apologetic really your nature? When you look at yourself, is that, is that what you see? I ask you, do you really feel sorry every time you say sorry? My guess is you're not sorry all the time. Uh, I, my guess is you don't actually think that what you say is confusing uh, or too much to ask. I think you're proud of your inner strength and that's, that's what you really see. And you're super glamorous, just like this, this lady. But it's true that we have had to, for many reasons, put that inner pride aside. Society has told us for a really long time that our value comes from taking care of others first and ourselves second, or you know, like men first, then children, then, then ourselves. You know, We come last. And as women, this was actually a smart tactic back in the day because we were really dependent on outside forces and, and men for things, like, like most things, like all of the things. Uh, we, we, had, we had to bow down, we had to back down to get what we needed to survive. Uh, we didn't have a lot of things like rights, votes, jobs, and it really wasn't until that long ago that this changed. Um, like, I don't know if you guys know this, but until 1974, women couldn't even get their own credit cards without a man co-signing on it. 1974, like, that was like four years before I was born. That's insane. Uh, until 1978, a woman could get fired for being pregnant at her job. Like, that was not illegal. They could let you go. So, you know, we, a lot has changed. Um, and that's not the case anymore. Luckily, that doesn't happen. But, you know, we're so far from being perfect, obviously. We're, we're working on that. Uh, but the reality is we only got all that shit pretty recently um, in the long history of humanity. Um, we were raised by, you know, our mothers and grandmothers who, who lived in that time um, because that time wasn't that long ago. But, um, you know, thanks to, the hard, to their hard work, we, we don't have to do this anymore. We feel much more empowered now, but there's still, there's still something holding us back. And it's the B word, bitch. There's this idea that if you aren't this, then you might be this. And being a bitch is bad, apparently, and not in like the good, bad way, like, oh, you're a bad bitch. No. Uh, <laughs> the way we see it is it's not a good thing. But here's the thing. You could do everything right, and I think a lot of women strive to, for that perfection, to do things the right way. And there will still be people that think you're wrong, that you're not good enough. Like, there's just that, that standard is never going to change. Um, Someone is always going to think you're a bitch, no matter if you're like the nicest person ever. Um, so, so what I'm saying is, you know, you do you. Like my answer to the question of sexism and self-expression is, do yourself. Just don't do things out of fear of, of being wrong or disappointing someone. Do things in a way that are totally true and fair to who you are, and do that unapologetically. And that that's truly like what feminism is at the end of the day. 
But here's the thing, we can all do it better. Like, I want to add that none of us are great at, we're not born great at anything. Um, we're like born as babies who don't know shit about shit. I mean, well, actually, like, we know a lot, like, babies know a lot. Anyway, uh, uh, so why should we assume as a man or a woman that the way we communicate right now is the absolute best that it could be, that we're, we're getting it right? Um, for me, that feels a little egotistical or ignorant. You know, regardless of gender, we could all become better communicators. Um, and to, we can all be more aware and cognizant of the language that we use and how we communicate and how it really expresses our true intention as just human beings in the world. And so these days, we live in a constant world of constant communication at our fingertips. We all write, whether you're a writer here or not, we all write every day, all day, our emails, our texts, our work, our personal lives. Um, so email is where I began my experiment, and the quick, it's the quickest place to start. But really, these concepts apply to, to everything. Because the words that you send off into the world, they matter. Every single one of them that you put out in the universe, they reflect the esteem with which you hold yourself. They ask for what you really want and share how you really feel and think. Um, and if you don't use those words as a conduit for your true self, you, you, don't, you won't get the things that you want in life because you're hiding it. You're cloaking what you want, what you really want in life because you fear that what you want is too much. It's too much to ask for. Um, and that's bullshit. So let's see, let's see if any of these resonate with you. I feel like I have to babysit everyone or nothing gets done. I constantly worry about being too harsh or coming off bitchy. I don't get answers, responses, or results as quickly as I want. I have a hard time asking for things I legitimately need. I don't feel like my ideas are taken seriously. I see other people getting results more effectively and it's frustrating. I just feel like what I'm trying to say gets lost in communication. I just don't feel heard. So does, do you guys identify with some of, some of these messages in your daily life? Um, so I, what I'm here to do today is not talk about what we're doing wrong. I'm talking about how we can be heard better, how we can make our true selves, our true intention better heard. Because that's what, that's what we all want in life, is to just be seen and to be heard, to be noticed, um, whether you're a man, whether you're a woman. And the great thing about equality is that it benefits everyone and it pushes everything forward. So, okay, let's look at some examples of what I mean when I say we're not making ourselves truly heard. I'm sorry, guys, but I just had this thought. It's probably crazy, but look, just as long as we're throwing things out here, I had sort of an idea or vision about maybe the future. Except what you really mean is I have a dream today. Or, hey, listen, Tom, George, if, if I could, I could just... I just really feel like if we had liberty, it would be amazing. And the alternative would just be like awful, you know? That's just how it strikes me, I don't know. Except what you really wanna say is something badass like, give me liberty or give me death. <laughs> it's quite a difference. And uh, my point is, is that your words matter because you matter. You have ideas that are big and brilliant and poetic and meaningful and impactful. And you have every right to say them clearly and boldly and not hide them in a bunch of this bullshit that's just supposed to soften it and make it hard for people to really understand. Because um, you guys fucking matter. So, okay, let's do this. So, the marquee event, the sorry. Sorry, I'm not sorry. So we're just gonna walk through some examples of, of these kind of no-no words. Sorry, just wanted to check in with you. When you say that, what it really sounds like is, look, I need to check in with you, but I don't want to bother you. What if I'm bothering you? When what you really mean is, I'd like to check in with you. Doing your job shouldn't bother people. If it does, it's their problem, not yours. I'm sorry, do you mind resending the file? It didn't come through. Or what you're saying is, something went wrong that wasn't my fault, but I, I don't want you to feel blamed for it. I'll take the blame for this one when you can say, can you resend the file? It didn't come through. If it's not your fault, it's not your fault. You don't need to take blame for it. 
unless you're like the wizard that controls the internet. It's like, not your fault if that file got lost. It, it could be someone else's fault. It could be the fault of no one, but it's, it's not your fault. And you don't have to be the person that takes the blame for it. Oh, I didn't know you wanted the last donut. Sorry. What you're saying is, I got to the donut first. And I'm really excited about it, but now I feel bad. You probably deserve this donut more than I do. You could say, oh, did you want this donut? I, I got to the donut first, but hey, let's, let's share it. Why not? Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> well, <laughs> I can't tell if that was like a, a proper use of sorry or not. Because like sometimes, I, listen, we'll just, we'll just move on. I'm still learning. I'm still learning along with you guys. Um, but it's, it's not your fault if you got there first. Donuts are fair game to everyone. And you, you got there first and you, you love donuts and you fucking deserve a donut. Like, you are entitled to that donut like anybody else in the world. So, of course, when you make a mistake, apologize. When you skip ahead to a slide and you shouldn't, maybe you should apologize. But, you know, don't be an asshole. Apologize when it's warranted, but you don't need to be sorry for having a question for someone else's problem or someone else's mistake or just for simply taking up space. This is a good one, just. But it's just, just. So here's an example. Um, I just like to add something to your feedback. What that's kind of saying is I have an opinion that I think will be helpful, but I'm afraid of offending you. It's not a big deal though, you're probably right. You could just say, I'd like to add something to your feedback. Your opinion is important. It, it is a big deal. It means something. But ha the idea of having an opinion in the first place is not a big deal. It should not be shocking to anyone that you have actually thought, like, thoughts going on in your cute little brain. You know, like You can have an opinion on someone else's opinions. That's OK. I just, ha I just have one little question. I don't have enough information here, but I'm afraid you might think I'm stupid because I don't already have the answer. Uh, don't worry about though, it's not important. It's not important if you answer my question right now. I have a question. What is so crazy about just saying I have a question? It's okay not to know stuff. We don't have to know all the answers and it's actually an admirable thing to own up to it. Just say, like, I have a question, dude. Like, need more, need more information. I'm just following up on my last email. You haven't replied to my email, and I need a response. Like, that's your job here. But I don't want to pester you. Is it OK if I remind you again? I'm following up on my last email. It's such a small word, but if you look at the two of them, it, there, there's such a difference in the message. Asking for a response and for people to do their job, that's that's okay, like that is not a big deal. You are entitled to do that because it's actually part of your job to make sure that things are progressing and moving smoothly. And sometimes someone else isn't really pulling their weight and they should be you know, encouraged to, to do that and they may need a reminder, but that's important. It's not you're just following up, it's, it's you're doing your job and you're holding people accountable. Just is a permission word which downplays what you want and what you want to say and then prioritizes what someone else wants to say. But you don't need to, you just don't need to ask permission for having a voice, having a thought, having an opinion. This is a good one. Actually, actually is bullshit. Um, I actually don't agree with the client's recommendation. Look, I have good reasons to disagree with the client. I, I have a lot of experience in this area, and I know this project, and I know this team, but I don't want you to think I'm a difficult person. I don't agree with the client's recommendation. Not always agreeing with someone doesn't make you disagreeable. Like, it's not so extreme as that. Like, you aren't a difficult person because you didn't agree with someone all the time. Like, or I actually, think, I actually think it's time to step back and regroup. Okay, guys, I believe the best thing to do is regroup in this situation, but I'm not sure you respect my judgment. I'm not sure you're gonna think that's a good idea. Let's regroup and chat about it. You know what you're doing. Don't, don't pretend that you don't. When you use actually all the time, it makes, it makes 
it makes us sound like we're surprised by our own questions and answers, that you actually you know, have an opinion, that you actually have an idea or you actually have a suggestion that, that could be beneficial to, to people. But you're not, you're not surprised by what you think. What you, you think, you know, you have a legitimate thing to say and you've thought a lot about it, actually. This is, this is a good one. I do this one all the time. Does it make sense to keep asking, does this make sense? Which seems like a really like caring and kind thing to do, right? Like you want to make sure that people aren't, aren't confused and they're following and tracking. And <laughs> You're loving it. <laughs> <laughs> um, here are my suggestions. Do they make sense? Which is code for, I've put a lot of thought into what we should do, but I, wor I worry that you might think my ideas are dumb, my suggestions are dumb. Here are my suggestions. What's so weird about having a suggestion? If you respect your own opinion and people will respect you, but if you start seeding that idea of doubt that like for some reason what you're saying is confusing, you're already putting that into people's minds. You just respect your own opinion and, and people will as well. My edits are attached. Let me know if they make sense. That, and the best is when you add the, ex the, the question mark to it. Let me know if they make sense. It's not even really a question. You're just <laughs> adding more questioning to your questioning. Here are my ideas and I'm worried I'm being confusing and you, you won't understand what I mean. I, I'm obviously not able to articulate my ideas in a way that you're gonna get. My edits are attached. If, if people don't get it, they will let you know. It's their job to come to you and say, I didn't really understand what you're talking about. Th that's on them. You're doing your job by, by, by doing your job, giving them the information that they need so don't predispose them to that idea that, that what you're saying is, isn't gonna make sense. When we jump to assume that we're being confusing, what it kind of does, it's preempting that potential criticism from others. So if we criticize ourselves first, then we soften that, that blow. When someone else criticizes us, we've already, we've already done the work. So it doesn't feel maybe as critical. But it, it, that's, it's condescending. It's condescending to yourselves, but it also is kind of condescending to the person that you're talking to, to say like, does this make sense? Are you getting it? Are you following? Like, it's just it, all around, it's, it's not a good thing to do. So, you know, being clear is important. Really articulating your thoughts and being thoughtful with how you express them is really important. But questioning your sense, your, your intelligence, your, your sanity, you know, that, that, that doesn't make sense. Um, and this is, this is a very common one. Thanks, but no thanks. So when you say something like, I know it's not ideal, but it's the only time we can meet. Let me know if that works for you. Thanks, winky face. What you're saying is this is the, this is the best solution I have. This is a sucky situation, but you know, uh, this is my solution, but I'm worried you're not gonna like it. So I'm gonna end on something that makes me feel really nice and friendly. I know it's not ideal, but it's the only time we can meet. Let me know if that works for you. Like, does that sound like too intense or like demanding? It's, no, it's, I know this is not a good situation, but here I'm offering you a solution. Here's the time that we can meet, but if you have a problem with it or it's not working for you, I am inviting you to tell me. You don't need that, thanks. The presentation looks great, thanks. So this one, you're like, okay, well, I mean, sometimes people do things that you wanna say thank you and you wanna give them that enthusiasm and that, that excitement and yeah, totally. Someone does a great job, they should feel thanked for it. So when you, when you use something like that, what you, what you are trying to say is the presentation looks great and I really, really want you to know that I appreciate your effort. It's a great thing. But the difference between thanks with three exclamation points and a winky face and saying, the presentation looks great. Thank you so much for your hard work on it. This is one of my favorite things that you can immediately start doing tomorrow and it will change so much for you. It works every time. When you appreciate personal effort with something personal, 
when you just say thanks with the exclamation point, like that's not personal. That's just a, a platitude that you can stamp on everything and it doesn't mean anything. People don't really feel thanked when you do that and you do that with everyone. But if you can be really specific and identify what you're thankful for, the power of that is just, I cannot, I cannot um, emphasize that enough. Um, just try it and I, I guarantee you it, it, the benefits go both ways. It's pretty, it's pretty meaningful. So being positive is the way to get shit done. And I think as women, we do a really good job of seeing, seeing the positivity, being proactive. That's, that's the way that you, um, you make things happen. But it's not our job to be cheerleaders. And it's not our job to nice things up that aren't ideal. Like that, that's not our role. You can be enthusiastic. You can be appreciative and, and be real about that appreciation. Just don't. Slap this thanks on everything. It doesn't mean anything. So these are these are the the no no words that we've covered. These diminishing phrases and words that I I hope you all kind of as you move forward just keep these in mind and do that exercise. I, you will be surprised at how much you do them. But what's really easy is you just start taking that out and how it makes you feel is like. You're, you're going to find out because you're going you're to be doing this. You're going to do your homework. Um, but the thing is, this goes on and on. There's a lot of other things. Um, when I taught this course at, at Hornley Anderson, it was like a two-part thing because there's a lot. There's a lot of stuff. I think my first thought, this will only take a minute. Oh, I'll try to. No problem. It goes on and on and on. The thing that I hope you all take away tonight, like if you forget everything and all the lists and everything, that I've shared with you today, you don't have to ask anyone for permission to have questions, to have feelings, opinions, arguments, hearts and brains. You don't have to ask anyone for permission to exist. And you just keep that in mind every time you, you put a word on paper or on your cell phones or whatever kids are doing these days, uh, um, you'll it's been really, really profound for me, and, and I hope it is for you guys too. So, um, and I would, I would encourage you guys to help each other make that change. When you see another woman or man or anyone diminish themselves in an email or otherwise use these things, you know, gently remind them that they're, they're worth more than that and to cut that shit out. Um, because when we keep ourselves and each other honest, and true to who we really are as people, we only get stronger as, as women, as men, as just human beings. So 